May the force be with you. This is going to be a physical SEC football game, and, and that's what it was. But just so happy for our fans and so happy. So, so happy for our players. Um, On the muff punt, obviously a really close call that was overturned. I mean, what what was what was said to you? On, yeah, on I, I don't know. I mean, it's that he touched it. We did not come here to lose by seven. We came here to win the game, and I think you could see that by the way that we played. We just ran into a team that was seven points better than us tonight, and. It'd be hard to look at the Arkansas Razorbacks and not be proud of the effort and the resiliency that we showed tonight and the physicality. Uh, he's, I think he's gotten better and better. He's, I mean, here's a bug. He's had the ability to do it in practice. Oh, welcome in the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm joined, as always, by my cousin Shane. Who goes by Big Orange Balls on Twitter? What are you up to, you big Tennessee homer? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? We are back. We are back. <laughs> <laughs> it's crudin' season, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, man, we took a week and a half off there. Apologies. Had to go mm-hmm. visit the in-laws up there in the mountains. So... Uh, it seemed like mm-hmm. I, we missed about 50 big stories. You know, I, I thought, Shane, for some reason, I thought, man, this will be a quiet weekend. We got, we don't have signing <laughs> day for a week. The games are over. Everything will be cool and calm. And then, bam, it was day <laughs> after day after day, mega stories left and right. But today, Shane, is all about recruiting and the early signing period. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to gloss over everything that just happened the last week, uh, but just that just the hot topic right now is recruiting. So what we're planning to do is cover what happened on the early signing period, day one on this show. Mm-hmm. And then on the next episode, Shane and I are going to share our thoughts on, on all the news that we missed over the, the last week and a half. How's that sound, buddy? <laughs> Sounds good. See what happens when Mike leaves town? It, it goes straight to hell. That's <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Everybody, I, here I was down there with Coach O sitting on the beach, and then I, I'm looking at Twitter, and it's every day some hard hitting news coming out. And I'm like, Mike, how's Utah, man? <laughs> you know, yeah, he's up there in the he's up there in whatever city that's called. But uh, no, it's good to have you back. And and like you said. We're just going to do recruiting today. We're going to talk about that because, like you said, that's the hot topic. But we don't want to we don't want to just act like all that crazy news that happened the last ten days uh, didn't exist. We'd like to sit down and talk about that. So we're going to get on tomorrow's pod with that and give you guys something to listen to over the weekend. Yeah, and Shane, of course, you know this is an SEC show. We're almost exclusively SEC, but mm-hmm. I just got to start with this because it was so funny and it was so wild. But man, who in the hell? Could have seen this coming, but the number one overall prospect, Travis Hunter, decommits from Florida State, Shane, is going to play. Is he going to Alabama? Is he going to Georgia? Mm -hmm. Is he going to Ohio Mm -hmm. State? I mean, those are the those are the candidates, right? No, sir. He's going to play for (laughs) Deion Sanders at Jackson State. What? And oh my God. And even as his he made his commitment. You can hear in the background they're saying, "Oh, you know, he got a million dollars to make this move." So, I mean, this is <laughs> kind of where we're at in uh, you know the NIL landscape and all that. But uh, man, just when you think recruiting can't get any wilder, uh, it just seems yeah. like every year we we top ourselves. And, and this was really was the biggest story of the day, don't you think? Well, absolutely. I I, I mean, it's it's hard not to talk about it because it's it's everywhere. But it's not like this. T- no, it's not like Deion Sanders landed a ton of recruits. No, they ponied up for the number one recruit. But you got to think it's a smart move, Mike, because it puts them on the map. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I-, I feel bad for the kid because let's face it, this is a kid that's not going to stay there. I guarantee you, in a year, <laughs> maybe six months, maybe even in two weeks, his ass is hitting the transfer portal and he's going somewhere <laughs> else. So I hope nobody burnt didn't burn any bridges, but. I, I think it's an eye opener because you know everybody was curious how this NIL thing is going to work out, and it's going to—it's a hot topic today. 
Uh, you looked at it, but Mike, let's face it. I, I mean, even uh, damn uh, G- Gene Chizik. Do you see what he he was putting out there talking about the Tennessee <laughs> lineman making all fifty thousand dollars? He couldn't believe it. Uh, one of my favorite tweets was which which uh, which one of the eleven room bedrooms did you tweet this one from, G? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like <laughs> so you know it's just like the the nil the nil is obviously a hot topic, but Mike, this has been going on for a long time. It's just now we don't have to play games. We can see how much these kids are making. Yeah, and you know now that uh, we're in this social media landscape, Shane. You know, the thing that has really taken over, if, if you're obsessed with these things like uh, I tend to be, especially when I'm working here, is the Twitter spaces. And, you know, we, mm-hmm. we've done a, a couple of those during the season. We're probably going to have to do more and more of those as, as those <laughs> become more and more popular. But what I'm noticing now, Shane, whenever there's a big college football story, immediately uh-huh. somebody's firing up one of these spaces things. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened when this number one overall prospect decommitted from Florida State and went to Jackson State, and someone has, uh, they screen recorded a highlight of this Florida State fan just completely (laughs) losing it. So I'm going to play that real quick, and then we'll move on to to the conference that matters. If you got kids in the car, you may want to turn this one down a little bit. (laughs) I was just wondering. I I was just sitting here wondering. Why didn't we hire Dion in the first place? Why? Why couldn't we hire Dion? Uh, hell, not even Jackson State. Get the coach from Jacksonville State because we can't beat them on the field either. This is some bullshit. And I'm not going to sit here and take it from that fucking piece of shit over at goddamn Jackson. Hey, bro. Yeah. The, okay. sun is shining, right. the sun is shining. The birds are chirping. <laughs> The air is good. Go outside, my dude. All right, Shane. So, I mean, my goodness, how how could you be so upset over what a high school athlete does? But I'll never know. But, man, that, that was just pure my, gold, wasn't it? Dude, it was hilarious. And, it, and it, I went through a couple stages on this one, Mike. And the first one was just uh, – I thought it was hilarious. Like you said, overreaction of a high schooler and where he's wanting to go to college. But then the second part of me is like, you know, I get it. You know what I'm saying? If, if you've been struggling for so long, you know, the Florida State Seminoles, they have been on top. They have won national championships. You know, they're, they're just trying to get back. And then you lose your best number one recruit. I mean, think about it. How many number one recruits do you have an opportunity to get? And you think you got him in the bag. And then he goes – out of Division One to hang out with Deion Sanders, <laughs> who you love because you grew up watching Sanders in primetime. So, oh, man, you just talk about a tangled web. So there was all that emotions, and that was what's going on in the guy's mind, and unfortunately, we recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, you know, paying players and whatnot, a uh, short clip here from uh, Jimbo Fisher, who was on the Paul Feinbaum show. You know, I thought he said it perfectly. You know, he's kind of joking, but not really. And uh, here's Jimbo's interpretation of uh, what the heck's going on now with the uh, NIL and all the deals behind the scenes. Coach, I know all you can do is is go out there and try to get the best players you can. But today, uh, you you may not be even following it, but the national narrative is is about uh, the other things. Uh, uh, One of the top players in the country was committed to your former school. Uh, He was flipped to uh, Jackson State. And, and a lot of critics of the game are, are, are in shock today watching some of the things and hearing some of the things. As somebody who's played the game and coached it at the highest mm-hmm. level, where are we right now in college football? Well, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a practice. Now, you can't promise things. You can't say, I'm going to get you an NIL deal, and that's illegal. I mean, all you can do is present what other players in your university have done in the past. That is all you're allowed to do. But, I mean, it's like uh, you, you want – there was a lot of NIL deals going on before, Paul, before all this was going on. They just weren't legal. <laughs> no one told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all that stuff in college. Now, we don't want to be part of it, but at the same time, that's that's where you're at in today's time. At least it makes it out there, and it is legal, and the guys can get compensated. But I think it's enticing in recruiting. I think it's very dangerous in that way. But, I mean, you got to enforce the rules when they're when they're broken. you got to handle that part of it. But I think it's here to stay. Now, how they modify it, if they do in the future, whatever they do, but – it's part of what we do, just like the transfer portal is. All right, Chase. So, I mean, hey, he's he's saying it like it is, man. <laughs> These deals were already kind of in the works, and now mm-hmm. they're just publicized, and they're legal, and they're paying taxes right. on it. And, 
And, you know, I really do think that, uh, you know, if you're not ahead of it, then you're going to get left behind. And that's why I, you know, you see Dabo and all these people getting upset about it. And last time I checked, Mm -hmm. Clemson just had their worst season uh, in, in a decade there. And they're not reeling in all these recruits. Hey, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe (laughs) it's not, but I I really think uh, it's really on these coaches to adapt because they ain't changing these rules now that they've, they've kind of opened up the, the piggy bank, so to speak. You know what? Dude, it makes you wonder, you know, I'm not accusing anybody, but we all know it existed. We all make the jokes about the bag men and, you know, the families, the the cars down there, the chargers down in Tuscaloosa, you know, there was all these, these rumors, but you know, where there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. And that was going on. And, and maybe universities at Clemson were good at hiding it, but maybe now, you know, you could just with the net, when you got these NIL deals, I mean, it is, it, there's no hiding it. How, how much money do you need? Okay, how much was this kid offered over here? We can do better with this car dealership here. This is what we're going to do for you. So I, it's, it's, it's almost like new age technology. Uh, the first ones that were able to capitalize to the internet made all these billions of dollars. Right. Same thing's going to happen with these universities. Who can handle this the best? Because you, it's, it's a whole new ball game. It's a whole new department. Like you said, government's involved now because we're going to have taxes. We're going to have different things. But I like that it's out there. This is a free agency market. This is, you know, you're paying for players. But we were doing it already. And to act like we weren't, well, you, it's, you're blind, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, this shit was happening back in the 60s, okay? So don't act like all of a sudden we just started paying these guys. We're just up front with it. And what I like about it is there's a lot of people on this team, on these teams, like when you look at uh, Tennessee as an example, all the offensive linemen are making 50000 not just one or two of them. You know what I'm saying? So I think this is good for those athletes because they're going to benefit. And there's I, – Mike, I, let me get off – I'm going to get off this box here in a second. But one of the things that I, I'm starting to notice from these NIL deals is that it's going to keep players on the teams. You know, that's one thing you mm-hmm. didn't think about. Not just recruiting them there, but you're seeing some of these upperclassmen – that if they can make the money that they would make in a later round, a later draft, that they're sticking around with that university. I mean, this this is a good thing too, man. I think it's just capitalizing it, understanding it. The the the, the schools that do that first, the the ones that could pony up, the ones that's got the bank to do it, they're gonna they're gonna create juggernauts. But let's face it, these kids make those guys a lot of money on Saturdays. Yeah, and I think that you hit on an important aspect of this whole thing Shane that I think people are overlooking because just look at the SEC Arkansas and Ole Miss those are two that Mm -hmm. that really jump out to me that had more returning seniors super seniors if you will than anybody in the SEC and I don't think it's any coincidence that those teams had strong leadership had strong seasons on the field whereas Mm -hmm. you know uh, in a normal year those teams are really going to struggle against an Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, you know, the, the teams that we all perceive as, as getting all the, the best players. Now, right, that may still be happening, and, and I don't really know a way around that. I mean, you just got to – you got to recruit better, I guess. You got to perform better. But this gives – and I'm not trying to disrespect Ole Miss and Arkansas when I say this, but you got to give the little guy an advantage because Alabama and Georgia and, and some of these teams – they're not going to have elite players stick around for four right. or five years or six year. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think we saw a little bit on the field this year, Shane. And, and yeah. I, and I think that that's an advantage to some of the other teams that are just not reeling in all these five-star talent players. Yeah, I mean, think about it, man, you got a two-star and, and I'm just using this example. It comes in as a freshman. He's not impressive, you know, but he works on it. He's, he's there. He's got, He's got the nutritionist. He's got the 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 gym. He's got you know all these people working him out, getting him bigger, putting more on his frame and stuff. And that two star becomes very competitive in his fourth and fifth, and possibly even his sixth year. And he's different than a four star that walks in right there out of high school. So I, I think the competitive depth is is going to pay dividends. These these kids are yes, they got a free school. You know that's that's the argument. These guys got a free scholarship. Blah blah blah. 
But now they've got actual money coming in. And the name image likeness, that's so big for these kids because some of them aren't going to make it in the NFL, Mike. Right. But if they can get their face out there and, and the fans love them and, and who knows, they may find jobs in that community or that city or, or even on that staff in the future, you know. So I, I just think it is a good thing. There are some bad things. I, I think this whole Deion Sanders thing, I think that was an absolute joke and I think it's terrible for the kid. But I, I, I think that for every bad story, there's going to be 10 successful stories coming out of this thing. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> on the flip side, Shane, where Jimbo's out here saying, hey, we were, we've been paying him all along. We got Lane <laughs> Kiffin on the other hand. Oh, my God. Why are you having such a rough year in recruiting, Shane? Well, let's read between the lines here. Let's kick it over to what Lane <laughs> Kiffin had to say here on uh, the early signing. You saw probably, arguably, the biggest flip upset in the history of recruiting today with the number one player in the country going to an FCS school. What are your thoughts on the arena that you guys are operating in now with the NIL stuff? I said it yesterday. I mean, you're in free agency that there are no contracts. So, you know, I really hope for these kids, they get all the money that they're being promised at all these schools when they get there, because there's a lot of money being promised. So um, I hope for them that they get it um, because it is unique. These guys get promised all this money to come places, but they don't have a contract, which free agency, obviously you would in the NFL know that you were guaranteed to get paid what you're being told you're going to get paid. All right, Shane. So, hey, I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> this certainly reads like uh, Lane Kiffin is saying, well, we got outbid. <laughs> That's why yeah. that uh, we're, mm -hmm. you know, towards the back end of the SEC recruiting rankings and and we just had a hell of a season. But, you know, I think what he's really upset with, the frustrations there, Shane, is, you know, it wasn't that long ago Hugh Freeze and company were, were paying players. Now they were doing it com right. completely illegally. And – I, I have to imagine that the Ole Miss and their athletic department, they're, you know, they're walking on eggshells right now, not wanting to create a wave, making sure that everything they're doing, they're, they're crossing their I's and dotting their – or crossing their T's and dotting their I's because, because <laughs> I don't know what the laws are in the state of Mississippi, but maybe you can't throw out these, uh, these crazy uh, NIL deals. I don't know, but uh, – Either that or, or Ole Miss boosters aren't ponying up, you know, one way or another. And, and Lane Kiffin, <laughs> he seems like he's pretty upset about it, don't you think? Well, and and, he, and that's what it is, man. It, you, when you're losing recruits because of money, it's it, it feels sour. It feels like Kiffin had thought he had a few on the hook and, and lost it, you know, right. and, and probably lost it because of money. You, this is, a, like I said, it's a new age, man. We got these assistant coaches and, and coordinators and things like that, but you need freaking salesmen on that team too because they are going out there and getting these kids these deals or promising, you know, uh, telling them, you know, have have it ready. You got to, you got to, you got to, it's a pitch, man. It's a sales pitch when you go in that. It's not like Coach Die going in there saying, you know what, I want to I want to play at Auburn. You know, it's not like, it's not like our grandfathers or, or even what we grew up to. These kids are what's in it for me because they're all connected. All these kids are connected in 10 to 15 different social media outlets that they're using these days. You know, they, there's no more secrets. Everybody knows. How much did you get offered? I want that. I deserve mm -hmm. that. You know, I'm the best in this county. I deserve that. So it's it's going to be that moving forward. And like I said, those teams that that, that figure it out, the teams that you're, you're going to see it right now. I guarantee you, if you – pause this podcast and you turn it back on here in six years, there's going to be some teams that have never been in the top 20 that are going to consistently be there. Those are going to be the programs that took this NIL serious. This is the ones that got the money. I mean, it, the, these kids do not care about stadium renovations, Mike. They don't. They they want money in their banks. They Their parents want money in their banks. And, and it's a new culture, and we've got to create this. It, it is this way. It, it's not changing anytime soon. So, the ones that grab it by the balls, those are going to be the ones that are winning national championships here in about eight, ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think you're, you just hit the nail on the head, and uh, you know it's kind of the wild west out here, but that's kind of, you're getting things you never expected, and that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the fun of it all to me. You know what? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, Alabama's got some great boosters, but the reason that they got more money today. Is because they're winning national championships or competing for them every single year. 
Well, that you, winning causes more money to come in. So that's what people are going to do. Who, it's not about paying the coaches anymore, Mike. I mean, you know, Lane Kiffin got him an extension down there. It's not about him. It's about who he can get onto that campus. So mm-hmm. I get it. He's upset. But there's going to be some days, if he does get it right, that Ole Miss is going to load up and they're going to be successful. But you're just not going to woo a kid over just because of your personality or, or the way you play offense or who you got in the league anymore. It's how What's in it for me? Right. It's, it's a selfish generation, Mike. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, speaking of that, though, Shane, we've got a lot, a lot of commits to, to go <laughs> over here. So I highlighted – Basically, just the big decisions that we didn't know. You know, obviously there were so many uh, players that signed, but but a vast, vast majority of them were already committed. No drama. But hey, I'm all about the drama. I don't know about you, brother. Particularly <laughs> on a, on an early signing day, national signing day uh, event. So I'm just gonna go in order here, Shane. Basically, as these commits happened, and I'm cheating because I'm just going off my Twitter timeline, but because so many things happened and I was, a, I had a front row seat for all of it that, uh, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's no way I could recap it all without looking at this, but uh, are you ready to just kind of relive uh, the, the, the early signing period with me here? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you, Mike, I, as a Tennessee fan, there's been plenty of drama on national signing day. <laughs> so I was very excited not to see, any power tees flung across the room. So, you know, <laughs> but there was plenty of action. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first big uh, commitment of the day came from uh, Jake Johnson. Of course, the, the brother of Max mm-hmm. Johnson. And we all know Shane, we thought we were maybe done with Brad Johnson in the stands there with uh, nope. Max transferring from LSU, but no, you're right on it because Jake, who's the number tight, number one tight end in the country, Shane, committed and signed with Texas A&M. So it looks like Mm. both the Johnsons, now Max Johnson, he's going to make his decision here on, I believe, Thursday. That's So he's not Mm -hmm. officially announced anything, but it sounds like he's headed to Texas A&M as well. So uh, we may be getting more of Brad Johnson just this time in the stands (laughs) in college stations. (laughs) He ain't going anywhere, man. What a combination. (laughs) The three-headed monster, those guys. So, uh, no, I think that's, I think these guys are definitely going to go together. So when are we going to get the Max Johnson official? When, when did it, when's the date on that? I believe it's Thursday. So as this podcast Thursday. comes okay. out, he's probably going to announce it. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and announce it right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's an Aggie. <laughs> but, uh, Hey, don't worry if you're an LSU fan, because there was a little bit of drama with the uh, five-star quarterback, Walker Howard, some speculation that Florida was swinging for there trying to get him. But, uh, no, he's staying firm to his commitment. He has signed with LSU. So, Brian Kelly has got himself a five-star quarterback, mm-hmm. a legacy uh, Tiger down there to build his offense around. So, that's that's a hell of a start if you're uh, LSU. And, hey, we got a clip with this next one, Shane, because this was wild. Four days after committing to South Carolina – Four-star oh. linebacker Jay Sean Barham flipped his commitment here on signing day to Maryland, <laughs> and Shane Beamer was asked about that. And man, he got a, a wild story to share here. Shane, I, I'm sure you want to focus on the players that did sign today or have committed, but um, I'd be remiss not to ask you. You know what kind of transpired since Saturday with Jay Sean Barham, and, and what kind of led to his decision to decommit from South Carolina today. You'd have to ask the young man that young man that you're referring to. I know I can't say that it's a surprise when this particular young man uh, committed on Saturday. Uh, about ten minutes later, I got a phone call from somebody in the know up there that said, "Just so you know, it's all part of the plan. He's going to flip on Wednesday and go to Maryland." So I can't sit here and tell you that I was shocked. Um, but when you're on the phone with a young man at, as recent as late as 10:30, 11 o'clock last night, and he and the mom are telling you how they're so thankful they found a home, um, how p- appreciative they are of of how we do things, how they knew that South Carolina was the place for him on his very first uh, visit to South Carolina, um, and how excited they are for the future, you feel pretty good about things. So certainly with the young man you're referring to, some strange things happened um, overnight, which – you know, that's a story for another day. But again, we got the right people 
here in this program that signed today, guys that that, uh, that you can win with and you win with people. And, and we certainly got the right guys here today. That's for sure. I got to be honest, Shane. I don't think I ever heard <laughs> anything quite like this. I mean, you, you kind of got to assume mm. it's going on behind the scenes with all this flipping and, and mm-hmm. you, some kids really want the drama and they want the attention, but man, it feels like South Carolina got played and uh, man, you kind of, I don't know. You, you got to be a little bit more mature than it than this I feel like and when you lose a guy like this when you find out if this story is, is true which I assume it is right. I don't think Shane Beamer would be bringing this up just to bring it up and, and make stuff up but if this is true I mean I hate to say it but I feel like South Carolina may have dodged a bullet not getting this guy yeah but I look at it a little bit different man I, I think you don't want to burn the bridge because no, it's yeah. not like he's going to Michigan you know it's not <laughs> like he's going to Ohio State he's going right up the street to uh, I mean, their damn mascot, the turtle. I mean, there's a good <laughs> chance he's going to crawl his ass back down there to South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? So here's what I would do in this situation if it were me, is just be supportive because there's a good chance that his ass is going to be in the portal here in a couple of years and you have a good opportunity to get him back as long as you didn't burn bridges. Now, if it hurt personally, you know, again, I wasn't on the phone with him at 1130 at night. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he's a little exhausted from putting in all that effort only to lose him. But um, I don't know. I think in this situation, you'd be a bigger guy and try to, you know, try to reel him in later. No, I got you. Yes, they, they they may have screwed themselves on that one now that I think about yeah. it. <laughs> all right, how about this one? Hey, if he's listening, Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee doesn't like South Carolina. No, just, yeah. <laughs> I support you. Have fun up there for a little bit. Uh, Arkansas turned around, Shane, and they landed uh, four-star receiver Samuel Mbake, and he committed over Georgia, mm-hmm. Ole Miss, and Mississippi State, number 30 receiver in the country. That is a position of need for the Razorbacks, so that was a nice win. And uh, mm-hmm. I know I know this made you happy, Shane, because Squirrel White, who was getting oh, interest oh, oh, from Georgia yeah. Bulldogs, but Josh Heupel mm-hmm. and company got to – they held, a, held off the Bulldogs, and now they got themselves – uh, he's a smaller receiver, a slot receiver, but he's one of the fastest prospects in the country. And anytime Tennessee mm-hmm. with this offense can add some speed, you got to be pretty fired up about that. Absolutely, freaking lutely. That's what we need, <laughs> speed. We need to get fast. And I, I, a name like Squirrel, I, can, you know, I, can, I think there's a Squirrel Ford dealership or something in Knoxville. I mean, I mean, he's, he can just slide right in there. So, no, that's a, that's a huge pickup for Tennessee Vols for sure. Yeah, in addition to that, Shane, they also picked up a commitment from four-star defensive lineman Tyree West. He was previously committed to Georgia. Mm -hmm. But uh, from what I understand, this was just a Tennessee-Florida State battle, and Florida State thought they were getting him uh, on signing day. So uh, a nice coup Mm -hmm. there for Tennessee. Norvell took a hit this week. He got got paid, but damn, he lost every recruit he had. (laughs) He's used to losing. Four-star defensive lineman, Quincy Wiggins commit to LSU. He's a local kid over mm-hmm. Alabama and Florida. And anytime there's a how co- close, how close was this one, Mike? I, I heard I was. They said this one. Th- I think there was a lot of people surprised that he stuck with LSU. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing, man. With the coaching change, they don't even know who their defensive coordinator is. Don't know who the defensive line coach. I mean, these this was a critical commitment, I think, for LSU. But at, at the end of the day. You know, an in-state kid, a local kid. You just look at the tradition mm-hmm. of LSU. So many of those guys from Louisiana grow up wanting to be Tigers, and I think that pool was too much. But, uh, you know, these are the wins Brian Kelly needs to to salvage this recruiting class. And, not, I mean, it's still going to be a great class. I'm not sitting here saying, it's you know, it's fallen to pieces here, but uh, it, it could have easily if, if guys like this and, and Walker Howard – you know, at the last minute said, you know, I don't feel comfortable with this new coaching staff. So, you know, I, I think if you're an LSU fan, you're not thrilled, but uh, I think you're happy with uh, what Brian Kelly and company have done on the first day of, uh, of the signing period. Absolutely, Mike. But, hey, we'll fact check. It's brown squirrel furniture. That's what it is. I knew there was a squirrel in Knoxville <laughs> somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was a car dealer. Man, talk about an he's NIL sell- deal right there. You know what? <laughs> yeah, he's selling couches and Lazy Boys now, you know? <laughs> hey, man. But, hey, I'll tell you, LSU, and you're going to get to a few. LSU, uh, Florida, you know, they, they, they were under the gun, man. And I thought both of those schools pulled out, brother. I don't know what you think. I mean, obviously, this isn't the recruiting classes you've seen in years past from these dudes, but 
I, I think this is a step in the right direction for both those programs, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. But, hey, Shane, I know you were happy with some wins here. You, the Vols didn't land them mm -hmm. all because Auburn beat out Tennessee for the number one junior college yeah. defensive back, Keandre Scott. So that was a really nice win. And we'll get to mm -hmm. we'll get to Auburn here in a, in a little bit. But they were one of the biggest winners of the early signing period. Everybody was mocking their class. I think they were 12th or 11th here in the SEC. Now they've jumped all the way up to number six. So the Tigers were big, big winners here on the, the early mm -hmm. signing period. And, and to go with that theme, Shane, they flipped a four-star linebacker, Robert Woodyard, from Alabama. Iron Bowl mm -hmm. win there for the Auburn Tigers. He's the number 11 linebacker, a top 150 prospect in the class. He's headed to the Auburn Tigers to play for Brian Harson. That's big, man. I mean, because yeah. momentum, you know, you, you get all that bad news earlier in the week, and which we'll talk about more tomorrow. But, it, you know, it – Recruit, right before recruiting, it's momentum, man. And these kids that are on the fence, maybe 50-50, should we go here, go there? And if they feel like a place is sinking, they ain't going to go there. So Auburn, you know, turned it around. So I, I think, you know, obviously I hate that they steal them from Tennessee. I mean, they could have stole from some of these other guys. But but uh, they, they ended up pulling out a pretty decent day. Yeah, without a doubt, Shane. And, uh, but they did, again, this is the, the theme. You don't win them all. And they didn't. The Auburn Tigers mm -hmm. lost out. Four-star defensive lineman Travion Williams, in-state kid there, staying with Mississippi State, beat out Auburn and mm -hmm. Ole Miss. So anytime Mississippi State can beat out Ole Miss on the recruiting trail, uh, cheers <laughs> to that. Number 31 defensive lineman mm -hmm. in the country, a, a top 300 prospect. But again, Ole Miss, they got some wins of their own too. They got four-star linebacker Jerion Willis committed to, to Ole mm -hmm. Miss over – Arkansas and Auburn, he's the number 17 linebacker in the country, a top 175 prospect. So a nice little win there. And then Tennessee, Shane, back to the Vols. Man, the big day for the Vols continued because mm -hmm. they pulled out a, a pretty stunner, pretty big stunner here, Shane, at the last minute. They added a, a four-star pass rusher, James Pierce, from the state of North mm -hmm. Carolina, who, uh, you know, that there's a new recruiting service. It's called On3 Sports by uh, – Shannon uh -huh. Terry, and they got some of the best recruiting analysts in the country. They've got him as a top 50 prospect, number one overall prospect mm -hmm. in the state of North Carolina. So, uh, you know, Tennessee desperately needs some help on the pass rush. And anytime you could you could pull from uh, your neighbor there and get the, the top overall prospect from North Carolina, that's a hell of a win there mm -hmm. for, uh, for Tennessee in that defense. You know what? Absolutely. It's one of those kids they talk about – we were lucky he signed during the early signing period, you know. They were saying if he wouldn't have went later, some of these bigger boys like Georgia and Alabama may have said, hey, wait, why don't you come on down here? So this is, a, <laughs> I think, a huge win for the Tennessee Vols, man. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, a, you know, a tough pool but a big one, four-star Louisiana receiver Shaz Preston, Alabama, Shane, over LSU. Mm. Man, anytime one of them Louisiana kids jumps ship and goes to play for Nick Saban, Man, that's a that's a dagger, <laughs> dagger in the heart, you know, what to, to any mm. Louisiana fan. But uh hey, uh Nick Saban's the best for for a reason, you know what? God, he loves he loves shopping down there in Louisiana, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> he absolutely loves it, man. Hey, real quick, you think uh you think he sees his kid graduate? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Or you think he's out by then, you know? I just I'm just curious. Do you think four years Let's just say he stays the full force. Is is, uh, is Nick Saban sitting in the audience? Is he's going across the stage, or is he back, or is he down there at the lake? And he's on his lake house fishing. You know what? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. All right, man. But a huge day for the Aggies, Shane. It wasn't just Jake Johnson because five-star defensive lineman Anthony Lucas, the number one overall prospect from the state of Arizona, and the 14 number 14 overall prospect commits mm -hmm. to the Aggies over just about everybody in the country it was a huge huge day and, and the aggies currently have the number one recruiting class in the country so that was a hell of a pickup yeah but one of the biggest surprises in my opinion shane five-star defensive back kamari wilson picked billy napier and the florida gators mm -hmm. this is the number two safety prospect in the country he's a all-american and uh, now that uh, Billy Napier's down there and they, he's got Corey Raymond, the, the longtime LSU defensive backs coach, 
you know, this is a big, big win for a number of reasons, but the biggest one shade is they beat out Kirby smart. And right. You know, I'm not sitting here crying for Kirby smart. Who's hell. They got the number three recruiting class. They'll be just fine. <laughs> but your last coach could not beat out Kirby smart to save his life. Right. B- Billy Napier in a week and a half beat him out for the number two safety, which again, that's Kirby's baby is the secondary. You just beat right. him out for a, for a marquee target. And, I don't know, Shane. I'm I'm sitting here looking at what the Gators got in Billy Napier. It's too early to to give him a parade or anything, but uh, hell of a start, I think, for Billy Napier. That's I think that's it, man. All I mean that say what you want. You land three studs like that on defense, you're going to be all right. And, and right out of the gate, like you said, a, a program that had bad momentum coming into National Signing Day. I, I think there's a lot of happy Gator fans out there. They knew it was going to be tough. Everybody knows when you got a new coach coming in. But the fact you were able to, I mean, land two five-star studs on national i mean come on now Mm. what's going to happen next year if we have a decent season so uh, yeah i think the gator fans are excited about what they got down there now uh speaking of being excited for a five-star shane i hate to do this to you but uh them aggies they made it official walter nolan the tennessee defense alignment he officially signed and that was a big part of uh a&m holding on to the the number one class here he's the number two overall prospect number one defense alignment and that was one of those Filled with drama. Will he sign? Won't he sign? They said he was yeah. not going to sign about two days ago. Now he's mm-hmm. signed on the dotted line. So uh, Aggies are breathing easy on that one. Well, I'm just I'm just glad for them. You know, <laughs> I mean, just get – at least get him off my damn timeline. I, You know, how many, how many followers does he need, you know? So let him go. I don't <laughs> – But speaking of the Aggies, uh, Shane, hey, they weren't done – I'm just getting be getting going here with the Aggies. Four-star offensive lineman Cam Dewberry commit to A&M mm. over Texas. He's the number three interior offensive lineman in the country, a top 100 prospect. And then how about this one, Shane? Let's not overlook Missouri Tigers, Shane. They're, they were one of the big winners. They didn't have a huge day, but they already had a number of commits. And then their key targets for the day, four-star pass rusher DJ Wesselak commits to Missouri, and and look who they're beating out here, Shane. Alabama, Georgia, and LSU for an elite pass rusher. And here on uh, during the National Signing Day, Drinkowitz was on SEC Network, and you could tell he was getting that good news by uh, his attitude here. <laughs> Let's go through and, t- and give people the idea of exactly what happens. Did you bring donuts? Did you bring coffee? Did you have stuff for your staff? I mean, what did you do? I mean, that's what yeah. I did when you were with me. Did you do the yeah. same thing? Yeah, actually, you made me go get the donuts and coffee. <laughs> it, all right. um, so, you know what? We, we did have some breakfast. We didn't have any donuts. So about 8.15, I sent our director of football operations to go get us a dozen cinnamon rolls. And I've just been destroying cinnamon rolls as a uh, celebration of, of what we've achieved so far. You know, Missouri, the season didn't go as you wanted. You still made a bowl game. But this is how you turn this around. It's, uh, it's, it's getting players like this. You signed a four-star quarterback. You got a five-star receiver. I mean, they, these are we're talking all these guys are probably instant impact for this Missouri Tigers program. You know what? Oh, man. Fun story. All right, real quick. I, I'm allergic to one thing, and that's cinnamon, all right? So, yeah. So, listen, listen. You know how I found out? It was from a damn Cinnabon place, all right? So, my wife my wife says, hey, this new Cinnabon place opened up. You want me to bring some home? And I go, oh, yeah, of course. Come on. She comes home with a four-pack. And, of course, I kill two of them that night. Well, I wake up next morning. I, my face is swollen. My hands are swollen. I'm like, oh, my God, I had a bad reaction to something, you know. I didn't know what it was or anything. So I I called in to work. I said, I'm not going to be there today. My wife goes on in, you know, and she calls me later. She says, hey, baby. She goes, you want some more Cinnabons? I'm like, hell yeah, because I don't know I'm allergic to it, you know. I just thought (laughs) I got something, you know. So she comes home, man. I'm like the Michelin man the next day, brother. I I can't can't put my shoes on. My hands are so swollen. And she goes, I think you're allergic to cinnamon. My God, she was right, man. (laughs) After I cut out cinnamon. So uh, them Cinnabons about killed me, brother. But to this day, I I still wish I could have one more. I'm thinking about, you know, just drinking a bottle of Benadryl and killing one, you know, to see what happens. But I just don't know if the risk is worth it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 
Well, I'm not sure how to transition from that, Shane, but I'll, <laughs> I'll do it like this because Georgia, hey, we're sitting here saying they're losing this guy, losing that guy. Well, they didn't lose five-star pass rusher Marvin Jones Jr., who was a Florida State legacy. They beat out Alabama and FSU, so that was a hell of a win there. Uh, and then here, it, this was kind of the biggest news of the day, Shane, for uh, certainly the Kentucky Wildcats, but th- this was a saga all day. <laughs> the longtime commit. Is he going to me? <laughs> Keonta Goodwin, longtime commit. Hell, I think he'd been, he had been. He got his first offer from Kentucky when he was like in eighth or ninth grade. He'd been committed mm-hmm. for, for a year, I think. And, you know, he come, he had a ceremony and he said, I'm not ready. We'll, we'll have another ceremony <laughs> at another time. I thought that uh-huh. meant National Signing Day in February. And then here, he yeah. sa- and then he says, all right, we'll do 3.30. I'll make my decision. 3.30 rolls around. He says, I'm not ready. We're going to do 5 o'clock. We're going to do 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and what it was, he was getting pulled to Michigan State, Mel Tucker. But at the end of the day, Kentucky holds on. Good when they get their five-star offensive lineman, biggest uh, recruit, probably figuratively and literally, they've ever had up there in Lexington. So, uh, you know, Mark Stoops and company up there, they're, they're cheers and uh, tonight by uh, they landed that five star and man they they would have it would have been a rough rough signing period had they not held on. Here. Oh, absolutely, man. We've all been there, man. We've we've been. We, there's that one recruit you you weren't you knew you had but you weren't really sure if you had you know. So uh, there was a lot of Kentucky fans on the edge of their seat, probably calling them boosters up, man. Come on, <laughs> get this boy down here. So. Uh, <laughs> Kentucky had a hell of a day, man. Them and Mizzou, those are those two programs. I, I think they're, they're 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 happy. I mean, given given the way the season ended, uh, there was I'm sure there was a lot of people worried about it. But man, you talk about bouncing back. You do that through recruiting, and and both those schools did well. Yeah, and last thing, Shane, I just want to run down. This is where the recruiting rankings stand following the first day of the early signing period. And Texas A&M, like I said, I'm just going by SEC rank, but they are number one in the country. So obviously they're number Mm -hmm. one in the SEC. Hell of a job there by uh, Jimbo Fisher and company. Alabama, number two in the SEC, also number two nationally. Right behind them, Georgia, three, both in the SEC and in the country. So the SEC's clean sweep here of uh, the top three recruiting classes in the country as of uh, the end of the signing period. But you hit on it there, Shane. Missouri, who would have thought Missouri Tigers, number four recruiting class in the SEC. What a Mm -hmm. hell of a job there by Eli Drinkwitz and company. Kentucky Wildcats, number five again. You know, that would have been stunning. People would have thought uh, you were on drugs had you said that a decade ago. (laughs) Yet here we are, Mark Stoops and company building this thing up. Your Vols right there, number six, Shane. That What a heck of a job mm-hmm. for Josh Heupel and company, number six in the recruiting rankings after uh, the first day of the signing period. Auburn Tigers, number seven. Great job there by Harson and company. Mm-hmm. Jumping up a couple spots today. Uh, LSU's number eight, which yeah. op- obviously you'd like to be a lot higher, but uh, you just hired your coach, so you know it could be a lot right. worse. Arkansas Razorbacks, number nine. Mississippi State, number 10. South Carolina, number 11, Ole Miss, number 12, Vanderbilt, 13, and Florida Gators, dead last at 14. But, again, they've only got nine – excuse me, ten commits when uh, everybody Mm -hmm. else is uh, basically at 20 or or close to it. So the Gators got a lot of ground to make up, but they have the most room to add to to boost that class ranking in the, uh, the national signing period. Uh, excuse me, National Signing Day here in February. So uh, that's mm-hmm. just where things were at today, Shane. And, man, it was a wild one where things were happening left and right. And this really is uh, one of the best days of the uh, college football calendar. And uh, <laughs> I'm about to pass out from uh, just, just all the action we've had today. You know what? Yeah, you, well, you couldn't you could take your eyes off of it, you know. I made a joke. If you're working today, there's just no way you're getting anything accomplished if, if you're keeping up on that. Because as soon as you look up, you're like, wait a minute, what happened? 
you know, where does Dion coach at now? So it's like <laughs> yeah, little things like that, man. And then you find yourself in rabbit holes and, and and these hot takes from Lane Kiffin. I mean, it was just a, it was a wild, exciting day. Uh, there was a lot of winners and losers today, Mike. I, I did want to ask you real quick. Out of all these programs, I guess who are your uh, top three winners? Yeah, so I I got A and M firmly number one. Now mm-hmm. they only jumped up a couple spots, but it's significantly harder to go from uh, number three to number one, you have to add five stars after five stars, which the Aggies did. So they're, mm-hmm. for me, they're the number one biggest winner in the SEC here from the early signing period. I've got the Auburn Tigers, number two, Shane. Like I said, I mean, they made a significant jump. They didn't get everybody they wanted, but they got right. they fit a lot of needs there. They still are, are missing. Uh, I think they need to land a quarterback, which they'll probably do in the transfer portal. But this was a tremendous, tremendous day for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, I got Missouri, number three, Shane, just, you know, hanging up there because everybody and their mother thought, Missouri Tigers, this is cute. You know, all summer they're doing well. They'll lose Mm -hmm. some kids. They're not going to hang there. They're right there, number four in the SEC. And that's truly the only way that Eli Drinkowitz and that program are going to, you know, make strides in the SEC. This is the level you have to recruit at. They did a heck of a job keeping so many prospects home. And uh, I got Tennessee Mm -hmm. right there, right behind Missouri. I I thought Tennessee had an outstanding day. And uh, last but not least, Florida. I know they didn't make a big splash, but again, I just go back to landing a five-star that Georgia wanted, landing uh, another four-star that uh, many other elite programs in the country wanted. I know you're not happy with uh, your current ranking, and, but most of that has to do with uh, just not having a lot of guys committed. Mm-hmm. Today I saw a tremendous sign that uh, Billy Napier is uh, hes at least going to raise the talent level. And, and that's that's job number one right now in Gainesville is to get that thing to, to, to where Georgia is at and where Alabama is at on a talent level. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of with you there. Uh, I guess I would consider Florida and LSU – those. Those two right there, because it's so hard during – how many times have you seen it? It's almost like we lose a, a recruiting class right. when we have a coaching change. And the fact these guys were not only able to get some talent, but like some elite talent. I know it wasn't as – like I said, it's not what you've seen in years past, but I don't think we're going to see a drop-off that much with these two guys. And uh, they got plenty of time to bounce back. Of course, they got the portal to hit. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things coming out. But I, I think those are the big ones for me, LSU and Florida. Florida, not sexy, not a lot of people talking about it, but what they were able to get. Of course, Texas A&M, you know, there's a reason that Jimbo didn't stay in Louisiana when he went down there to play because he's got this recruiting class waiting for him back in Texas. So, uh, man, they you talk about loaded. These guys, I mean, if you're an Aggie fan, was it the best season? But, man, you got this? I, how can you not be excited? This is why you pay Jimbo. This is why you're paying your recruits so well. Mm-hmm. This is this is it. It's a money-making town, and these guys are ready to spin it. New facilities. I mean, just this this is this is why Texas A&M's a top going to be a top five team for many years to come because they're ready to spend that money. They got these guys in there. So I, I'm I, I mean, if you're an Aggie fan, you got to be on cloud freaking nine right now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Shane. Uh... You got anything else before we put a bow on this uh, recruiting recap episode? Well, uh, just real quick. I mean, we got to – I just want to mention, hell, Texas and Oklahoma, you know, these these guys I – mean, we're not going to talk detail about what they got, but these are kids that are going to be playing in the SEC, and, mm-hmm. and that's two more top ten recruiting classes coming into our league. So, the rich get richer, man, and we're going to have ton, <laughs> absolute ton of talent playing here in the next few years. So – I'm excited to see some of these kids. Uh, I've watched enough highlight videos. I want to see them in college action. So let's uh, – and, and I'm, I am curious, man, how this NIL thing plays out because there's, there's – eventually there's got to be some structure to it. So I, I'm just kind of curious. It's going to be a hot topic. So that's just going to be more more for these coaches to talk about down there in Hoover. Are they going to be in Hoover this year or are they, are they mixing it around again this year? I can't remember if it's in Hoover or it may be in Nashville this year. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got me thinking though, Shane, real quick over under how much, uh, Arch Manning, how much are they going to offer him? I mean, my goodness. I mean, he, he's probably gonna have Ooh. a $10 million offer on the table. Don't you think? Uh, dude, 
the guy the guy will make more than the head coach easily. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about that. He is going to make more, and it's not just. I mean, we're talking. Dude, they, they, we could be national TV. I don't, I don't, I don't know the 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 ram. I don't know the parameters of this, but don't be surprised if you don't see him in a damn subway commercial one day. You know, right. with Tom Brady. I mean, that's just how big he's he's become, and uh, everybody's going to want a piece of it, and especially these uh, these these guys. Like I think about uh, what's his name at, that deals with all these coaches, uh, Jimmy Sexton. Yeah, Jimmy Sexton. I, I mean. You're talking about just a new branch, man. If you're thinking about a job change, now's the time to get into this because I'm telling you, these there's about to be some serious money made down here uh, in college football. So don't be surprised if we don't start seeing more firm, uh, more of the firms coming and, and taking control of these NILs. But yeah, this is just a new, it's a new game, man. It's a new world, and we're just on the tip of the iceberg here. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, I think we'll end it up there, Shane. I really do appreciate you joining me as always. I really appreciate each and every one of you for checking us out and being patient with us as uh, I went out of town. I'll never go on vacation again, but uh, <laughs> th that's going to do it, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right. See you guys. Go Vols. Yeah, I'm thinking about some Cinnabons tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off tomorrow, so I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs>